Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to talk about solar powered NAS. There's going to be those of you out there that want to run your own private server, your alternative to the cloud, you want the data under your fingertips, but you have got serious power concerns. Maybe that you're running an inconsistent power connection or that you're on a houseboat, on a mobile home, ultimately running some kind of deployment where solar is the go to thing. And given that servers more often than not are going to be on 24 7 with sporadic access, there is the question mark of a solar powered NAS system. So with this in mind, this is part one of a part of two part series where I'm going to be exploring it. Now in this part, we're going to be talking about getting ourselves a little solar generator, grabbing ourselves some solar panels and running a few mid tier tests on a very modest NAS system. The next one, we're going to scale stuff up significantly. But for this test, what I wanted to see was if you wanted to run a very modest NAS setup, how reliable was a solar connection? Now, there's certain things we're going to have to factor in. Number one, sunshine. Well, depending where you are in the world, you're going to get different levels of input of solar there that lovely little solar radiation coming down that you're going to convert into long-term power storage is going to be very different from those in dubai all the way down to iceland the amount of sunlight you get will vary now i'm based on the south coast of england and i would say of all the places in the uk here we probably get a little bit more sun than most but it isn't uniform to the rest of the world. Now, for this, uh, these tests that we're going to talk about today were conducted within the first two weeks of May 2024. Now, for the setup, I wanted to go with first the power. The power I went there, I contacted a company called um, All Powers, and they supplied me with two things. One, the R600 power station, and this is a 299 what what our storage system i should say it's got a couple of mains power outlets it's got usb type a and type c it's even got a wireless phone charger on it i didn't bother using that for this test uh, and it retails for about 200 nicker there now it's a 600 watt output but obviously we're not going to be using that kind of scale for reasons that will become clear later next the solar panel um i went with a four um, stage uh, fold out uh, weatherproof solar panel that was based in a garden on top of a shed. Now I'm looking at my price tags here, it was um, 169 nicker. This is a 140 watt solar panel there, so it made sure that we weren't going to have any kind of deficit with regards to the power being delivered to the power system. Now, so if you've been keeping count, we've spent about 360 nicker so far. Now on the other side, we can talk about the NAS server system. Now there's going to be ways for us to save a bit of power anyway. For a start, I went with an ARM-based power NAS system, the Synology DS223. This retails for about 230, 240 NICA, depending on where you are in the world. It's a two-base system there. And although it is an ARM-powered system, uh, the Realtek RTD1619B, it also runs the majority of Synology applications beyond and not including, uh, well, it doesn't really include things I've write once read many, it doesn't include virtual machine deployment, but it supports containers, BTRFS, and the majority of the collaboration suite, not including active backup there. You've got all the backup options, you've got surveillance there, you've got multimedia, you can run it. Uh, inside that, I put two SATA SSDs, these were Kingston DC 600Ms, 500 gig each, these retail for about 30 to 40 35 nicker give or take each it wasn't a huge amount of storage but i knew i wasn't going to be running this system for years i just needed enough storage and a good balance of power consumption there on those drives the power consumption there of synology system there rated on their own website with a couple of one tb ssds uh, was at 17 watts max consumption with all guns blazing and 4.018 watts during idle we'll be looking at both of those later on now we can't just interface directly with the NAS. We have to come up with a modicum of uh, utilization and deployment. So I needed a switch. I wanted to keep things kind of low power as much as possible and thinking of the mobile home and the easy deployment there, people on houseboats and stuff. So I went with the GLI Net um, two port mobile router. It runs on USB power. And although at full guns blazing, it's eight watts, you can actually get it down as low as three watts power consumption. It's got 2.5 gig and a one gig port, as well as Wi-Fi connectivity. That will become clear later on as well. Also, for those of you that were wondering about utilizing uh, a surveillance camera, because we will be including that, that was a D-Link DCS8302LH. And yes, I looked at my notes, sue me. Uh, that is a camera that knocks around but not very much indeed. I think you can pick it up now. I've seen it for 60 or $70. Um, and overall, when you roll all of that in, that was around about 70 nicker 
for the storage media, 230 for the NAS, and around 99 for the uh, router there, there at the back, and about 50 for the camera, 50 to 60. Again, it is an end-of-life camera now. So we've not spent a small amount of money when we've only really got a couple of 500 gigs there at storage base. You probably wrap that up. So now you know the hardware architecture. We've got our solar battery, we've got our panels. Let's go through the results of those tests. Now, on average, across the days, because this was, you can check the weather for yourself, around about the end, uh, around between, I believe, the 8th and, look at my notes, uh, the 15th of May, the sun was shining pretty well. For our test, it was pretty darn good. On average, we saw around 40 to 50 watt during those sunny periods going into the battery and power consumption ranging across our tests between eight all the way up to 15 watt. We'll talk more about that later on. Now, our first test was the most Billy basic of them all. I set up the NAS. I set up the NAS connected to the uh, the mobile router there, the mobile router with the multiple ports there. I didn't attach the camera, I didn't run any processes, and I ran the, the NAS just in a, it's there if I need it, and left it for 24 hours completely idle. I didn't access it, just to see what our baseline consumption would be. And the following day, when I went into the device, absolutely fine. The system, when I returned to it, had more um, just over 70% of its battery storage still intact. Now, no doubt that had gone down really, really low. And when the battery was at 100%, we saw 5 watts going in and 6 watts going out. And during the PM, we saw still so only go down by the afternoon at 4 p.m., down to just 94% total storage there. So by the time the sun went down, it presumably had about 90% of its battery power still to use. And when it went down to idle, it would have gone crazy low again, 4 to 6 watts, maybe. So that was an absolute success. But no one's going to run a server just in idle all the time. You're going to want to access it. So that brought us into our next setup. The exact same NAS, the exact same drives, the following day... Uh, we let the battery go up to 100%, so the back, um, we to the sun came up. And then from there, we ran the test, this time with hourly drive checks. So every single hour, the system, I hate seagulls for more than one reason in this video, um, the uh, every single hour, the NAS performed drive disk checks and scrubbing their performance measures using the scheduled task uh, tool within the Synology DSM. And that meant every hour, this system had to do something. It was doing the drive scrubbing, it was doing the system scanning, and I ran the security advisor running hourly checks on the system. So all of those happened at the same time every hour. And once again, we fast forward to the future. By the time when I started the tests, it was five watts in, six watts out, because the sudden, the sudden was out. And when I went to the following day, I'm pleased to say we had 13% left on the system. But that still rose the question. We were down to 13%, and it wasn't constant heavy use, but we didn't let the system really go into idle. It wasn't aggressive, and it is an ARM processor. And even though it succeeded, 13% wasn't fantastic. Bear in mind, this is a one-week test. We'd probably get much more reliable results if we ran this for a year, but I do have other stuff to do. So from that, we went on to our third test, and this is when we introduced that camera. Now, the camera was set looking out of a window, and uh, the window of the office, and it just had to have an alert every time that camera was triggered. The NAS had the hourly drive scrub in place, but that was it. We didn't, we removed all of the other stuff. We just left it to do the not scrubbing drive checks. So when I did that at 10 a.m., the system had 10 watts going in and 11 watts going out. So there's only a one watt differential between the two of them. And then we let the camera run its alerts every time a bird went by. By the way, that happened a lot. My cat jumping out of a window, just walking past the camera. For some reason, it absolutely loved doing that and triggered the camera a lot. But overall, I came back the following day and made my way into the studio and success. There was 12% left on the battery there. Again, not scientific, but still nonetheless, even with those alerts, it was still able to maintain a recording pattern with the battery uh, panel and that um, solar panel there on the roof. Again, we got quite lucky with the sunlight there, didn't we? So why don't we do a slightly deeper test? Now with this test, I decided to leave on the Synology NAS doing its periodic drive health checks every single hour from the moment it was on. But this time I left the camera at 1080p, 10 frames per second, constant 
recording. That's right, that meant this system had to be writing to the discs and overwriting them once they were full. They never reached full, by the way, even on a 500 gig. There wasn't uh, 500 gig drives. There wasn't anything on them to start with. Now, you're going to be unsurprised to know this is where we saw failure. I returned to the office the next day and unfortunately the system was off. The battery pack had started recharging because the sun had come up. It was around about 8.30 in the morning, but the NAS hadn't made it. And what happened was there was enough power coming in during the solar period, but after that, uh, around about 2, I believe 2.10 a.m., the system ran out of juice. We could tell that by going into the surveillance logs and seeing where the last recording was before severing from the system being shut down there. Now, there are things we can take away from this. Number one, obviously, this has been a very small test here with so many variables that could have been changed. I know there's going to be someone in the comments saying how unscientific this is, and I say to you, this is YouTube. Uh, next up, we can actually do some very vague maths with some of the numbers that we were looking at there. So going to my notes there. Um, at the lowest point, when we had any kind of test running, the system had 8 watts of power consumption there. Uh, again, it was flexible, and if we'd had no sunlight whatsoever, and we'd had the system running just on the pure battery pack, we would have received, uh, on the 299-watt-hour power R600 battery, um, it would have ran for 37.3 hours based on that 8 watt lowest point. Next up, the mid-tier ones where we had some tests running on there and the introduction of a camera, it went uh, uh, average 11 watts. 11 watts on that 299 watt hour battery from all powers, that would have achieved 27 hours or a little over, I think it was 27.2 hours of usage with no introduction of further power from solar so again not ideal it meant all you need is basically one day with no sunshine and you're absolutely shafted and then when we go to the highest consumption there we can see that at 21 watts at the highest consumption on this all powers battery power station it would have lasted flat out for just 14 hours which explained how the system just was not able to make it all the way through the night there so Utilizing a solar battery um, power station like this, by the sound of it, in any of the setups that I utilize is not a long-term solution. However, there are tweaks and ways and means. Number one, we can go for scheduled on and off. The majority of modern NAS systems allow you to schedule power on and power off periodically. So, had we introduced this system to power on at 10.30 a.m. and power down at 10 p.m., it would have have meant the system was only in operation for around 11 to 12 hours. That meant that this would have effectively doubled our utilization there. Again, to introduce between days with no sunshine. On top of that, you can go into the storage settings and enable hard drive hibernation. Lower that down to drives to choose spin down completely if you've got optical or even SSDs to lower any kind of utilization, which on SSDs has a negligible impact, has to be said for when those drives aren't in use to do a much quicker job of going into hibernation. And the same goes for the rest of the system going into standby, I should add. Now, on top of that, you've got things like USB hibernation, where USB ports were not in use, or USB devices that are connected but not used for a while can go into a hibernated state. All these things add up to very small but important increases in the amount of time the system can be utilized. Some modern UPS systems, are, again, are comparable to that of power banks like the one we're using and can actually be used as UPSs alongside your NAS system. That would mean that you could use a um, solar power bank to run through into a mains power outlet and use the big power bank, in this case the power station, to be used as a UPS device. And again, factoring in solar, there are regions in the world that you could really take advantage of that. I mentioned in the intro to the video that this was going to be a two-part series and that's because I want to scale this up with a bigger power system, more solar power there, and a larger extended period of time. And that's why this video right now, being published, I believe, in June, oh, sorry, July, August, was recorded back in May. The follow-up to this is still in progress. I'm not going to share any yet. Hopefully, I'll put something on screen. If not, it'll be linked in the description. But I hope you found this video helpful. 
I enjoyed doing it. I think this is a subject a lot of you have asked about. If you've not already checked it out, I did show a video on running NAS systems from a USB power bank. I recommend you check that out. That should be linked in the description. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. There's links in the description to everything I've talked about. There should be a written article coming very, very, very soon. I recommend you check that out too. And if you're interested in any of the products I've talked about today, there's links in the description to take you to a few different stores that list them. If you're interested and if you're going to go to those two stores anyway make sure those two things are true then do use those links it results in a small commission coming to me and eddie at nas compares and it helps us keep doing what we do but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time